Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Quantum Phase Technologies. I'm Commander Corblade, and I am working on Tales of Nowhere, the video game. Um, so, anyway, I'm trying my microphone again, and um, so you're actually going to hear an echo because I just want to test it out real quick. And make sure. Oh, yeah, it's having some troubles again. Oh, yeah, it's having some troubles again. Okay, so maybe I won't be using this microphone. Okay. So sorry. Okay. It so it sorry. was working totally fine, and then it wasn't. It was working totally fine, and then it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Now it sounds like it's working. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna go with that. I don't know. So I I got it working. Like I set up uh, everything, and I got the microphone working, and it sounded fine. And then um, uh, just now I I set it up and um. And uh, I figured that it would be working totally fine, and then it wasn't. But then I unplugged the microphone and plugged it back in. Now it seems to be working. I don't know. Um, I, I'm just going to go with it. Let, let me just test it one more time so you'll hear the echo, echo again. Let me just test it one more time so you'll hear the echo. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, so it, it sounds like it's actually going to work out okay. So um, I'm going to say welcome again. Welcome back to Quantum Phase Technologies. And uh, I'm Coreblade, and I'm working on Tales of Nowhere, the video game. So let's get some uh, music going, and uh, we'll get started. And uh, it sounds like the microphone's working, so that's, that's really good. We'll be able to actually have... Um, some hopefully better audio in this video than than we've had in the past um uh, not that it's been terrible audio quality but with the microphone it should be a little bit better and i won't have to um shout so far uh, but i'll still try to enunciate clearly so that you can hear everything that i'm saying um so anyway, uh, just taking a look at what I did, I actually did a little bit of work this uh, over the course of this past week, and it wasn't a ton, but um, I did fill out the rest of the areas that needed random enemy encounters, which uh, it was really just two or three areas that needed those. Uh, but this is one of them, extended path to tide on, and I did get the enemy encounters here. When I was doing this, I looked at these enemy encounters, and I was thinking there's a a, a lack of enemy encounters for the grasslands. It, it's uh, just slime scorpions and spiders and it feels like there can be some other enemies there so I think today I'm gonna put in a few other extra enemies in there and that'll be really nice. Um, and the other thing I want to do is I, I want to actually do a playthrough and start refining some of the battle mechanics a little bit. And I, I, um, I'm not going to do full-on balancing right now. I'm going to save that for another time because I also want to finish up all of the D&D universe. And some of the things that I have left is that... Um, oh, and here's some things that I need to fix. Uh, but I wrote down, uh, what are the things I need to do? I've got random encounters in all of the areas, and that's good. Um, we're going to refine that just a little bit. But I also want to finalize all of the major events. So I, I want to make sure that all of the events are completed and that they're fully fleshed out, which I know that they're not all there yet. So I do want to take a look at that, um, specifically around the Underdark area. And then uh, I need to start adding more NPCs to the world. And for doing that, I want to plan that out a bit beforehand but there are some random ones that I can throw in there and that should work out fine um, so if we get to that today that would be great but I don't I don't think we're gonna get to that um, it in during this run so I also need to add loot and other items to the world and then D&D will be done and that'll be very exciting so uh, let's just take a look at this really quick I'm gonna go open up the the folder that has 
what are they called? The the battlers. Um, okay, Shakes here. I'll show you what I'm looking at. So um, I'm gonna open this up and oh, actually thinking about it, we have for D and D and for Call of Cthulhu. So here are a bunch of them that I pulled in as potential enemies for D and D, and I think I'm gonna add some of these other ones for the uh, grassland areas. So um, let me just take a look really quick. I just want to add one or two just just to give a little more variety in the grasslands. I think that'd be really good. Okay, actually, uh, let me just take a look at the static battlers. So I'm going to do side view battlers. And I'm just going to take a look really quick. I think some of these are actually grassland specific. So um, let's go ahead and open this up a little bit wider. And um, I kind of want bigger. How, how do I make this bigger views large icons are there like extra large icons yeah there we go okay great this will be a lot better um this way i can look through and, and i can see them a bit better and let's uh, do five per row and let's just take a look through this really quick so i'm just looking for ones that might work in the grassland areas um just kind of more simple enemies and I think we can find some good ones there. And I would be looking in the animated ones, but I, I think, uh, yeah, these are all the deserts. I, I think the animated ones are pretty limited. Um, they just aren't a lot. They take a lot more work. So dragon bones, that's, those are the best ones. Um, but there aren't very many just because they're, they're a lot harder to do. So they take a lot more time. Okay, so we do have some earth creatures. We've got like this earth leaf imp and this earth mandrake. <laughs> those are kind of cool. Okay, those are our potentials. So um, how are we gonna do this? I would like to uh, open this. Nah, I can open that in another one. Okay, so I'm gonna open up another folder and I'm going to copy those into it. Um, I'll just move it over here. That's huge. So I actually have two screens and one has a, a different resolution than the other one. So uh, things look on it a lot bigger than on the other one and it's kind of funny. And I should I should match the resolution a bit better, but um, this is actually the best resolution for that monitor. Um, so it just kind of turns out funny. All right, so um, let's go to this thing. Um, here we go. And <laughs> just gotta find out where I am. Battlers, there we are. And for D and D, um, I'm actually gonna create a new folder and call it uh, Grass. There we go. I'll open this up, and I'm gonna grab these guys and drop them in there, just so that we can have them as potential. Earth Rock Golem. You know what? Um, until we get a, a good Rocktopus, this might actually work for that, um, for the graphic for that. The graphic I have right now isn't, um, uh, it isn't a Roctopus at all, but it's, it's just a placeholder graphic. But that might be a better placeholder graphic. Now look, here are tentacled things, so maybe I can take that guy and put tentacles on him. I don't know. But I think I've tried doing that before and it didn't turn out well, so um, I, I actually contacted Joshua and, and uh, he's willing to uh, put together a, a Roctopus artwork, which is fantastic. I think it'll look wonderful. Um, elemental Gemstone Earth. No, that's not quite what we want. We just need standard grassland enemies. All of these are fire stuff. Now we're getting into kind of forest things, and I think that'll work. Some of these will work for just regular grassland. Like grasshoppers? Nah. I don't, I don't think of grasshoppers and think, you know, that specifically, I don't think of scary or, or intimidating in any way. Not every enemy needs to be intimidating, just uh, some need to be nuisances, but... All right, we're taking a little bit too long to do this, so let's, let's just look through the rest of this really quick. Um, we do have some insect stuff. We're not really looking for insects, just um, other basic enemies. Hmm. Maybe this is something I'll have to go and look at later. 
Excuse me. Rocktail Demolisher. You know, every time I look through this pack, I see things that I haven't seen before, and I'm just like, that is really interesting, really cool. A lot of these are, are pretty amazing. Like that. Look at that. That's intense. Okay, I've got... Um, Oh wait, now that the music started, I wonder if the microphone's still working. I'm sorry, one more mic check. Microphone's still working. I'm sorry, one more mic check. Okay, it sounds like we're okay on it. Okay, it sounds like we're okay on it. Okay, we just, <laughs> in the past, the microphone has just sound very garbled. Just um, not not uh, in a good shape at all. Um, my voice sounds uh, not quite right though here. Let me adjust it just a little bit. Anyway, enough of that. Let's uh, see if we can get any more... Uh, just regular earth creatures. Maybe some bunnies or maybe hornets. I know it says mountain. That doesn't mean I can't put them in the grass. Yeah, maybe some hornets. Let's um, do that as a possibility. So we've got a uh, leaf imp, a mandrake, mandrake, and a uh, mountain hornet. That maybe I can do. do, do, do. Um, maybe a snake. Serpents. Yeah, let's carry that over, just in case we want to do that one too. I thought I saw a whole bunch that I thought, hey, that would be perfect for the grasslands, but now I can't remember what they were. What are these? Plant warriors. Cape Sundew. That is a gnarly looking thing. Rose Knight. Wow. Screamer Mandrake. Okay, that's the evolved version. Rabbit Warriors Archer. <laughs> that's cute. Um, <laughs> okay, faster than this, quicker. This is why uh, often when I'm going through these, I have to go through quickly. That was cool. Uh, skeleton dragon and skeleton bunny and archer. I uh, said skeleton hair, but anyway, this has a lot of stuff in it. Um, a lot of really cool things. Um, <laughs> all right, you know what? Um, that's the end of it and I think we're good with what we got so the ones that we grabbed that are potentials are these ones here let's do um, let's do large icons on these actually maybe a little bit a little bit bigger um, so anyway these guys are are the potential ones not not that one but I was just looking at them for the other for octopus and yeah you know, we're not gonna use them for octopus I'm just going to get rid of that guy for now okay so we've got an earth leaf imp, an earth mandrake, a mountain hornet, and a mountain serpent. So let's let's actually build some enemies around those for the grasslands and then we'll drop them in. Um, so let's go to enemies and we'll go to D&D. &D. I kind of want to base them off of leafen. Show side view battler, but these ones are actually static battlers so we're gonna have to change that. But yeah, let's just kind of Copy them off of Leaf and, well, some of them. So let's, okay, let's just uh, do the first one. Earth Leaf Imp. Do we actually want to do that one though? Let's not do that one. So so we're, we're not gonna do this Earth Leaf Imp. We're gonna get rid of that. Uh, but we are gonna do this Earth Mandrake, the Hornet and the Snake. So let's start off with the Earth Mandrake and we'll just write it like that. Earth Mandrake. And I'm going to leave the stats all the same. Um, the skills I might change a little bit though. Uh, let's see, force slime just attacks, carnivorous plant. Um, I'm trying to look for a, a skill set peacock strut or lion dance, not really. I'm looking for things like uh, insight or shouting attacks because Mandrake just, uh, Harry Potter I'm sure is making me think that a Mandrake just screams and and makes um, trouble. So kind of want something like that. Guards in this one. Oh man, okay, I'm spending way too much time on this. So um, Mandrake, might poison and do some corrosive moves and stuff. Now that's more the hornet. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually gonna copy the spider and do that for the hornet. So, all right, hornet, great. 
Um, and we'll just do straight up like that for the Hornet. I, I might increase the stats though, but again, we're going to go through and balance a lot of this, and so it's um, some of this stuff is going to change. Um, okay, so I'm actually just like, I need these. Um, uh, images. So I'm going to open the folder and I'm going to drop the images in there. So I'm going to go to images here and we're going to go to uh, side view enemies. And I think this is, yeah, I already have the mountain serpents. Oh, so I've already got that guy. Of course I do. He looks really cool. So I'm going to drop in the earth mandrake and the mountain hornet. Maybe those are the only two I'm going to add because I already have the mountain serpents, but let's take a look. I don't see the um, snake, the mountain serpents. I did put enemies in the mountain, right? Desert, forest, slime, owl, golem, wisp, rider, wisp, golem, and owl. Okay, so I'm actually confused and curious now. I thought that I had set up the mountain um, with enemies. So it looks like I did, yeah. But none of them is that snake. None of them is that, that uh, mountain serpents. Who knew? All right. So I didn't put the snake in the mountains. Um, and I actually don't see the snake anywhere in here. Uh, so, so I think we should go ahead and create it. Nope, not seeing any snakes. No snakies. Okay, we've got a sandworm though, and that's going to be a, a scary guy. Um, okay, so we are going to do a snake, and I'll actually base that off of the scorpion. Um, actually, maybe not. Maybe I'll base it off of that sandworm. No, not really. That doesn't quite quite work. Um, Reflective wall. That doesn't quite work either. So I'm just looking for something. Oh, sand snake. Maybe I can just. Ah, great. Okay, I like the sand snake. So I'm going to use that and do that for um, the mountain serpents. And I'll just do um, mm, serpents. I'll, I'll just call it serpents. And I'll give it its image right now. And that image is mountain serpents. Great. And if the size needs to change, I'll change the size. But for right now, I think this will work out. Um, the Hornet and the Mandrake. Now, the Mandrake, I'm going to need to change all of this stuff because it's not a side view battler. So we need to change all of that. Um, and so the Earth Mandrake, I'm going to get its um, graphic here. Oh, that's not right. There we go. Was the serpents different? No, it was okay. All right, great. So the Earth Mandrake is set up here, and the serpents is much weaker. Eh, yeah, I'm just going to have to balance everything. So the Hornet is a Mountain Hornet, so I'm going to go and pick that graphic right there. Okay, so now we're set up with these three enemies, and I just want to add them to the grasslands uh, so that they kind of rotate through as well. Um, so the troops, we need to make some of them, and uh, the background, we're just going to change to the grassland background so that we can see what they look like. Um, cool. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, uh, let's go down here. And uh, we're just going to do a couple mandrakes, earth mandrakes. Okay. You know what, let's throw in a scorpion why not so i'm actually going to remove that guy add the scorpion and then give us another earth mandrake does that make sense did i base those off the same thing all right you know what <laughs> might have based those off the same thing so the earth mandrake um if it's just the same as the scorpion then i don't want to put them together nope we're good okay so Troops, we've got a couple of Earth Mandrakes and a Scorpion. One, two, three, four, five, six, like we generally do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 
12K. Now I'm just gonna do a quick battle test and make sure that they are in the right place. Or at least don't look like totally weird. Music is gonna clash for a moment. Um, they look okay, except this guy, three, and this guy, I wanna move over. Uh, just one, is one okay? Let's test it again. Right now we're just looking at positioning. All right, position's looking good to me. So we've got Earth Mandrakes and Scorpion. Maybe we should do one with just a couple Earth Mandrakes. Um, yeah, maybe just a couple Earth Mandrakes. I just want a lot of variety. I, I want it to be variatus. Four, five, six, because that's a word, right? And I'll, I'll bump this guy over a couple. And I'm just gonna, I, I'm, I'm sure that's good. That'll look all right. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is the hornet. So I just want a couple hornets together. I'm just gonna move these by hand and go ahead and test it out. Why does everything come in pairs? There's nothing that actually comes with just one thing. But if something's powerful, then, I mean, that, that worm becomes really powerful. These things are a bit too big. Hornets, sh I mean, scary hornets should be big, but I, I don't think these hornets should be that big. So let's see if we can get a uh, scale sprite. That's what we're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So in the case of that one, we made it bigger. In the case of the hornet, we are going to make it smaller. So we're going to scale it down to, I don't know if I want to go all the way half. Let's try 75% on these ones. Let's just see what that looks like. I wish I could turn the music off in here while I'm playtesting, but I'm not able to. Okay, so this guy needs to go up a little bit more, and this guy needs to go over a bit more. And let's take another look at that. Okay, that's looking a bit better. So I'm gonna hit apply and that, we're gonna auto name that. And now we have a couple hornets. Let's see, what else would hornets show up with? Maybe I can do a hornet and something else. Maybe a hornet and a slime. I do like the slimes, I, I think they're funny. Let's do a slime and a hornet. Great. Okay, let's just see what that looks like. Okay, fantastic. And I know it's it's kind of weird, a slime and a hornet, but I think it'll be fun. It'll be fun just having something strange. Let's do three serpents in this one. Let's. Let's just, sometimes you're just gonna run into three snakes and it's gonna be kind of crazy, so. Because I think serpents are gonna be a, a bit tough. I don't want them, again, these are basic enemies. I don't want them to be too terrible, but I also want them to be a bit of a challenge. That actually looks really good, so I'm gonna set it like that. And how about, um, I don't think snakes and spiders would be together, but I'll put a, a snake and a scorpion together. Which I think I've done on, on one of the other ones. Snake and a scorpion and a slime. <laughs> that would be funny. Okay. All right. It's five, six. It's funny enough to me that I want to do it. All right. Let's see what that looks like. It's going to be weird, but I don't care. It's going to be funny. It'll work out. It'll be fine. If I get complaints, if if uh, people are thinking that this this is just too odd, um, things like this that I'm doing, then um, I, I'll uh, change it. I'm definitely open for input and feedback. But um, but I think things like this are fine because it, it gives you variety. Again, it's just it's uh, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be weird to run into something like that, but I think it'll be. 
uh, a good addition. Okay, so I've got that applied. So we're going to start with the Earth Mandrake, and we've added um, six different troops. So we need to add six troops to the grasslands, which is a lot. Wow. Okay, so we're just going to go through uh, like we've done before, and we're going to take this and just add these to the grasslands um, encounters that are possible. So we're starting with the Earth Mandrake and Scorpion. Excuse me, and uh, the region is 40. Yeah, just like those others. Okay, so it's, it's going to be just like the other ones. Um, it's going to be on region 40, and it's going to be the same weight. So, so they're going to show up at the same, you know, the same. There, there's the. It has the same chance of showing up as any of the other troops in the grassland. So it's just going to be a big. Um, a big variety here, which is really good. I really want the, the big variety there. So let's see, we've got the Hornets. And... Slime and Hornets. Throwing slimes in there. Just for fun. Because why play a video game if not for fun, right? Why make a video game if not for fun? Serpents, three. Wait, did I just do serpents? Oh, I totally did. Just doubled up. Let's see, it started with that one, three. Oh, so I only have one more left. Oh, I got the serpents and scorpion and slime there. Okay, perfect. So I think that's everything. I'm going to copy all of these so that I can just... No, I don't need to copy all of them. Let me just copy these six that I just added. And uh, that way I can just paste it onto the rest of them that I need to put them in. So I've got winter rest, uh, now we're going to go to winter rest normal, boom, just like that. Uh, lake path is going to have these as well, the grass fights, so I'm just going to add them there. The mountain village does not, it doesn't have the grass fights. I don't think, I have a different place down here, what do we have? Range 42, wait, so what is that one? That's 48, what is 48? Um, that's kind of weird. So I've got all of this down here, and I don't know why it's 48. I think that might need to be general grassland. Um, that's kind of weird. I'm not sure why that's there. Uh, let's go over to this. Yeah, that's all just grass, so I guess... Um, I don't know. I, I guess that's... Uh, supposed to be um, grassland stuff. Sorry, let me silence my phone and get a few messages here. Okay. That's interesting. I'll need to come back and revisit that because I'm not quite sure. See, I, I don't... So right now I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should put some enemies right here because it's on the outskirts of town still. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want them to be grassland enemies or mountain enemies now that you're in a mountain village. But... You're not quite into the mountain village yet down here, so I think I want to make it grasslands enemies. But that's a lot of grassland enemies. But you know what? That's okay. We can have a lot of enemy encounter possibilities. Why not? I don't think it's going to mess anything up. So I'm going to go ahead and drop those all right on there. And those are on 40, so see, we've got 42 for the mountain regions and uh, 40 for the grassland regions. So as long as we make these 40, then it should be fine. And that'll be a quick change. We just drop that there and that there. And that's done, and that should work fine. So path to mountain village, these 40. Oh, but let me copy the rest of those because now I have the other one on there. Um, let's see, Earth Mandrake down to the end. Copy that. And path to mountain village is where I want to... Whoa, okay, so this one has some mountain... Uh, yeah. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now is that I've got these, which as soon as you come up here, you now get some mountain enemies. You know, I think it's okay to have some crossover, though. I think it's okay to have the grassland enemies down here, and the mountain enemies up here, and then once you get into the mountain village, there are some grassland enemies down here instead of mountain enemies, even though just before coming in there's mountain. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to confuse anybody, but... It's uh, 
I, th I think it's going to be okay because when you're coming up to the mountain, you're, you're going on the path to the mountain, and out here in the grassland areas you can run into grassy enemies, but then you can start to encounter mountain enemies. And, and the thing is, the chances of somebody coming out here and running into enemies in this area is probably pretty low because anyone who's coming through this area is probably just going to go straight over here and straight up there, unless I put some loot here and there, which I probably will. Um, but still, the chances of someone running into this and getting a mountain enemy and being like, wait a minute, what's going on? I, I think that's going to be low. Unless, oh, well, okay. Here's the idea I have. Maybe, maybe I can ch do like a checkerboard here and on the other one. <laughs> I, don't, you know, I don't know if I really should go into this much detail with it, but I don't know. Maybe. So here's, here's what I mean. A checkerboard pattern like this see and so that way um, anybody who comes into this area will have a chance if, if they're coming in here well but th th some some of it's blocked by a tree but anyway they, they've got a chance to either run into a mountain or a grassland area battle um, I think that is going to work just fine and again I don't know if I should be going into all of this detail but i i don't know i think it's kind of a nice detail to add to it um mountain village i'm going to do the same thing actually i'm going to grab that and um bam okay and i'm i'm just going to go through and checkerboard this whole thing just so that we've got a variety i'll skip that one and do that one skip that and do that there we go Okay, that, that looks pretty good. So anyway, I think that solves the problem. So when you're entering from the path to the mountain village and the mountain village in that little section as you're entering, you have a chance of running into mountain enemies or grassland enemies, either way. This uh, tends to fall sometimes. Okay, we're good. Yeah, let's move on. Path to Ishmar. This one's going to need more of these. Perfect, okay. Uh, City of Ishmar, actually, um, but that has no battles. And take a look. I think all of this is contained within the City of Ishmar. Wait, what? What is contained in the City of Ishmar? Up to the Magic Shop. Okay, and then the Path to Ishmar. That's out here, and I just fixed that one, so we're good. Now it's going to have more variety, which I'm glad that we're adding more variety because see, something like this, uh, when when you go out exploring these areas you're gonna get sick of the same old enemies so having a variety or, or at least the possibility of this much variety I think is gonna be a really good thing because the grassland now has more variety of enemies than any of the other areas um, foolish mar area but that yeah we don't have anything on there seacoast nothing oasis nothing foolish mar lower nope um, Although this, uh, actually, yes, this does have some grassland, doesn't it? Yep, it does. Um, number 40 enemies. Okay, we're going to have those there. Um, foolish Mart Upper. I don't know. No, no. This this was just for mapping purposes. Nothing else. This one, too. No enemies here. Uh, the North Port Town, though, this does have some grassland enemies. So we're going to add this here to these uh, enemies. The desert area, no, not this one. Again, these, these were all just to build out the, the map itself so that I could take some, some uh, images of the map and turn it into an in-game map. Now the path to, to desert, oh, I didn't finish that, did I? Well, I got the regions defined. I just didn't put anything in the regions. So number 46, let's go ahead and go to the desert town and 46 is all set up. Oh, that is a lot of enemy encounter possibilities though. Um, and the path to this desert, um, uh, we're going to drop that in there. So that's good. That's what I was going to do. Okay, I, I completely forgot. I was going to get the region battle back plugin for the desert and the coast, and I forgot to do that. So 
Um, I'm going to need to do that this week. I'm going to make an extra note for myself. Extra big note. This needs to get done. Um, okay. Region. Battle back. I just, I completely forgot to do that. Totally spaced it. Plug in. Okay, so I'm going to have that next time. I'll have the, the region battle back plug in. I was just looking at these these um, uh, regions and I was like, wait a minute, I was going to do something with that and I totally forgot to do something with that. Um, so now I'm going to make sure that I do that. Okay, so these ones, oh, um, dang it. okay, I'm going to have to go back to to this um, like winter rest so that I can grab the full thing, all of it. I'll just grab all of it. I know I just need to kind of add on to ones like this. What just happened? I don't know what just happened. I think I just did it twice. There we go. And that's why I was thinking I would do it the other way. But anyway, okay, so these are all the grassland ones. So, uh, oh, all right, so I'm getting back to the path to the desert. I'm just going through these ones, filling them out really quick. So these have all the um, grassland ones. The desert town should should be all set. I don't think this has any grassy areas. Nope, it's pure desert. Then the path to the desert, this is the one that we need to work on and get the grass area and the um, sand area stuff in there. So now when we walk on the grass we should have just grass encounters and when we walk on the sand we should have just sand encounters and that'll be pretty good. And we do have um, just a little bit of a, a mix, you know, here as it goes through. So as the player's coming, if they're over here in this area, um, when they walk uh, around here, they've got a chance to run into a desert if they're over here on the, the uh, purple tiles. Okay, th that's, I think that's good. I think we've just given ourselves a few more encounters that we can do in the grassland, which is really good. Um, in all of this so everywhere there's going to be a chance to run into some good stuff oh call of cthulhu we're not there yet oh that's gonna be fun though um i remember that i went on here and i actually got this uh, region restrict so that the vehicle can only go on certain ground and actually that's not the one where did we do city of arkham that's it okay i remember that we started putting that together but let's not look ahead too terribly much. I started looking ahead for a bit because I was, um, I, I felt like I had reached a dead end a little bit with the the D&D um, &D universe because um, the battle system wasn't in place and uh, I didn't have a, a very clear direction on everything that I was doing in that universe. So I switched over to Call of Cthulhu for a little bit, but now I've got a really clear direction and we're almost done with the D&D &D universe. So I want to, focus on that and get that done but I am excited for Call of Cthulhu and I'm I'm very excited about stars without number I think that one's going to be a, a really fun one to put together uh, I'm really into space games so I think it'll be fun to create that one and um, this um, the interior of the Exile of Fate I actually want to build out I, I created a 3d model of the Exile of Fate and I even 3D printed it, and, and I've got it right here. It's sitting on my desk. Um, so that's the the model of the Exile of Fate. And you, you can actually see that in-game in Isaac's intro. And maybe we'll play through the intro really quick and, and uh, take a quick look at the game. Like I said, I just kind of want to go through and um, refine the battles just a little bit. And I, I think we've got a good start to them. Um, but I don't, wanna f I, I don't want to fully... Uh, balance everything right now um, but if we can balance a few things and make it a little better that'll be good and we'll, we'll go through Isaac's intro really quick but I created the 3d model and I 3d printed it and uh, now I want to create the interior of it um, as a 3d model I, th I just think that would be a lot of fun and I've been doing um, modeling in blender and uh, getting better at that so I think I should be able to Although I haven't gotten to um, textures and and uh, what's it called 
I know what they're called, the, the colors on, on things in 3D programs. I know what it's called, but I can't remember that right now. So anyway, um, I, I haven't gotten into that, the lighting and the textures and, and that sort of thing, so it's not going to look good when I build it out in 3D, but um, that's one of the reasons why I want to do it though, so that I can learn how to do all of those things and make it look a lot better. Okay, great. So I think it's time. Let's go ahead and do a playthrough of this. So I'm going to pause the music and we'll give this a good playthrough. Oh, that's right. I need to actually set the character back up on here. So we're going to do starting position player. And I also need to drop into here and make the player invisible to begin with. So we're going to start transparent just so that um, the player doesn't show up and um, you know, show up right there while we're selecting the character. Then, then you'll see Isaac while you're selecting the character and it's not going to make any sense. So we're going to go to new game, uh, even though we are picking Isaac because it's extra quick to get through um, his area, his little intro. All right. So we're just going to go through as quick as we can. Oh, there we go. Oh, she's in bad shape. Oh, you know, I don't even need to talk to this guy. That's why I picked this level, because I don't even need to talk to him. All I have to do is go get the stuff. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, here we go. Nice. You'll see the little model. There it is. <laughs> it's so bad. But like I said, once I get the lighting and the textures working in Blender, then I'll be able to make a better model of the ship and and uh, I'll be able to put it out here and it'll look a lot better. Okay, so we just need to get through this beginning part as quickly as we can so that we can get over to the D&D universe. I just want to go from the beginning just to make sure that all of the stuff is set, um, all of the, it, everything gets initialized correctly because uh, sometimes when I go from a previous save file it's been saved when certain variables have already been set and so it doesn't initialize correctly and we don't really get a good idea of what's going on. So um, let's see, let's just head up to the hotel, get your stuff, great. I will do that. Mr. Wexler, and he's confused. That guy knows his name. Orville. Oh, I love Orville. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. Here we go. We're getting there. I know that Isaac is on floor five, room six. It's like his spaceship. I mean, it's like his spaceship, but even even now, like, you can you can be in here, and you're just like, you know what? I'm not really on a spaceship. And I wonder if the characters feel like that when they're in their rooms. I'll, I'll bet they, you know, they, they feel like like their home. You know, the, it, it feels like home to them because it's made to look like their home. But at the same time, I'm sure that they're always just like, you know what? It feels like home, but there's just something off about it. Just because they're not really at home. Okay, I'm going to save in file one. Save, yes. Still don't know how to troubleshoot the delay on that. It just takes too long to save the file. And it didn't used to. Great. Okay, so now we've got the TST. Um, should I save again? Uh, let's go ahead and save again on number two. Okay. So we're going through a bit of a playthrough here. Hopefully it won't take all the rest of our time, but I do want to see where we're at and, and where we need to be on this. I think I can skip this um, once we're on the trigger, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we'll just let this go through right now. So I've done the random encounters in all of the areas. Now I need to finalize all of the major events. So part of this playthrough is also to check on the major events and make sure we're okay there. But mostly I want to check on the enemy encounters and make sure that those are working correctly. 
Oh yes, we're going to go through the whole thing, which is cool. I do like this animation. I do need to change that specific part of it for the Call of Cthulhu universe and the Stars Without Number universe. All those places. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm still trying to adjust. I've had a, a rough few nights. Trying to adjust to the sleeplessness. Okay, so we should be able to run into enemies just just here if we walk around just a bit they shouldn't that's it all right spiders and scorpions cool so i'm just gonna blast them with fire nice that was super easy like way too easy yeah so we need our our characters to be uh, less powerful. I think that's part of it. So we should run into... Oh, hey, we're walking on top of stuff. Mm, let's make a note of that. Uh, do, do, let's see. So we've got um, on desert path can walk on trees and we're not supposed to that's a very odd thing to be able to do is walk on top of trees oh earth mandrake well yeah okay that's that's one of the ones that we did and that's pretty cool yeah thane has a bow and arrow not supposed to have a bow and arrow thane it's not his fault it's it's the battle system and that's okay we just we just need to fix it and find out why it's doing that and fix it well, that was pretty cool. Um, let's actually use a boost point and level slash. That was powerful. See these moves? Oh yeah, and he can't use it because I, I did restrict him on that earlier. And that does make battles a, a bit more difficult. Um, actually, no. Why are we doing rain of bullets? There's just one guy left. Oh, maybe that's why. Because it doesn't take much out. Just his gun doesn't take much out. Sheltering Veil, that's part of it too. This guy's increasing his power, his uh, defense. Whoa, we just got up to level three and got a ton of experience points. Yeah, and I need to balance this for sure. But so far the, the enemy encounters seem to be good. We should have a desert encounter. Yep, desert sand snake, perfect. How did Thane get more magic points? Because he leveled up. That's that's what it was. Okay, so we're, we're getting desert encounters now. Let's see if we get something else pretty good. Yeah, desert sand tentacles. Nice. Uh, <laughs> let's see how difficult these are. Let's go ahead and use a boost point. Oh, well, that was cool. Uh, do, do, do. Let's go ahead and do rain of bullets. That'll be really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, that just takes so much. Totally missed. All right, um, Isaac, we've used all of your boost points, battle points. What are they? Boost points or battle points? Boost points. I think. Yeah, boost. That's what it says. Alright, um, so I'm going to use Hondo's boost points and Rain of Bullets, and that should take him down pretty quick. Not super quick. Uh, we do have a level slash, though, and that's going to finish them off. Never mind, <laughs> not going to finish them off. So these, these Sand Tentacles are actually at a really good place. I, I, I like it. I like the amount of damage that they're causing, and I like the, the um, length of time it's taking to defeat them for level three characters. Sort of, I, I mean, we did take a lot of damage and maybe we shouldn't be taking that much damage. Why are our hit points all, oh, we just leveled up again. Oh, that's why. Um, so yeah, I think maybe we were taking a little too much damage from them. If we did a lot of battles like that, we'd be in serious trouble. Um, 
but that's okay. I think I think a lot of the battles should be more like that and less like these uh, simple ones that we've run into. All right, anyway, so that's good. Let's actually go ahead and avoid some battles right now. We're just gonna go into the town and make sure some of these events are working out okay. You know, the whole rest of our time might be dedicated to a playthrough. It's okay, we really need to play through and make sure that we know where we are. Oh, I keep having him say the exact same thing. I'm like, move on, move on. Okay, um, find 10 curious blooms scattered around the winter rest area. Um, where did we last save? I don't know if we saved after we got to this place. I actually want to fix that right now because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the events and making sure that they're okay. And this is including even the minor events. I want to make sure that those that these minor events are working out okay too. So I'm actually going to take a look at the items and the curious blooms need to be ore. I just need to change it so it, it says the right thing. Curious bloom, 58. Okay, so 58 is the curious bloom. I'm gonna write that down. And it needs to be ore, which is now something else. 153. So 153 is the current number for the ore uh, instead of the curious bloom. So the place I need to change that is here. Nope, not here. It's gonna be in the plugins and that's going to be in the what is this called? Quest journal, that's what we're looking for. So here in the quest journal, we've got the shards. Is that the one? No, that's one that I'm not using right now. Uh, this is the one. Collect item 58, um, but instead of that, we need to collect item 153, okay. So if I just change 58 to 153, wherever these are, I think that's going to work just fine. So this 158, it's gonna go to 153, okay. Nope, <laughs> that doesn't do okay, that does okay. Uh, so 58 is going to be 153, and that one's another one. Okay, perfect. So that got that. Um, so here we go. I hope I can find all of the instances. If I don't, I'll just uh, come back here and find more of them. Okie doke. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, this is just the default thing that was there. Uh, rewards list. I don't know what it's promising for rewards. Item 27 maybe, what it looks like. <laughs> that might be kind of funny. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. I think I got all of the instances of 58 and changed it to 153. So let's go ahead and try this again. And I do wonder where we ended up. Um, I'm gonna continue on file two. So it's still in the lab. Um, so after we go through this, then I'll go ahead and save it once we're in the the D&D uh, &D universe. That's what we'll do. I still want to make Elite Dangerous videos, and I still haven't, but I will. I do want to. I just I just think it would be fun, and I enjoy playing Elite Dangerous. In my first video, I think, so right now I'm engineering my ship to go out Thargoid scout hunting, and I think that's going to be my first video, just, just me going out first time Thargoid scout hunting. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Won't do a lot of editing on that video. Just, I'll just make it, edit it a little bit, and then send it out there. Just for funsies. Yes, I just said that word. Funsies. Because, why not? <laughs> Alright.
looks like you made it. We've got the beautiful artwork of the tiger stripe thingy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save here. Now the thing is, okay, now now I just realized that this might not work, um, because that that particular quest may have still initialized with the original item name. Uh, we're gonna find out soon enough. So let's go talk to the blacksmith again. We'll grab the quest. Wait, there was not a chimney on that tree. Um, whoop, there we go. Or yes, okay, we're good then. Uh, yeah, no chimney on that. Did I say tree? That house. Or that house. Hmm. I thought I added chimneys to those. Alright. So we're, we're in a little bit of a refinement period right now. So I'm, I'm going to drop out and see if I can get those, um, those chimneys in there right now. Just now while we're looking at it. Because if I don't now, what am I going to do it? Um, yeah, so there absolutely should be a chimney there. See, it's there. I don't know why it's not showing up there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this grass tile and just completely replace that one. Not that. I want that to be like that. And I'm going to take the grass tile and completely replace that. Um, and then I'm going to try to do this. I think it just is having some trouble with the layering. Okay, so this guy is going to be right here. And this one is going to be here. Okay, that looks fine. And now I'm going to add a chimney to both of these. All right. And this guy I'm just going to shift back over. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm not sure what is happening or how I'm going to get that to work. If I am even going to get it to work. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just move on with it. Please be there. Nope, no chimneys. Hmm. I think I know why. I think it's in the um, in the uh, tile set. I think that's where this is having some trouble. Okay, let's turn on this music. And go visit the tile set. So we're gonna go in here and open up the tile set. I just want to make sure. Um, wait a second. Which okay? I don't even know what tile set we're using. So let's go here and the tile set we're using is outside more nature, which is number eleven. So I'm gonna go into that tile set number eleven, outside more nature, and we're gonna go to the B one. And this little guy says not passable. Um, I'm going to make it above the characters. I think that's what's actually happening. These chimneys need to be above the characters, not these things. Okay, let's see if that makes any difference at all. Counter terrain tag. Okay. All right, let's give that a shot and see what happens. Save changes? Yes. <laughs> my eyes are bugging me. You guys get to see me rubbing my eyes. An awful lot. All right, let's see. Continue. We're gonna load up file three. It fixed it. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Um, that's that's great though. Yeah, because we can pass by there and um, it's looking great. Okay. Beautiful. So now we have this. Uh, we've got our quest right here. So we need to collect or. Find 10 ore scattered around the winter rest area, and we have found zero. And the guy told us to go into the cave over here. So we need to walk through here and potentially meet some enemies in order to get to... We have some cave enemies, right? I think we've got cave enemies. I totally forgot about this area. Hmm. Yes, we found one ore. Found two ore. Yippee. Uh, we didn't run into enemy, any enemies in here. I wonder if it's just set to a super high rate. I think I had enemies in here before I had them anywhere else. Yeah, there we go. That <laughs> we met Ray. <laughs> okay, so um, 
Yeah, let's let's take Wraith down inside the cave of winter. <laughs> this is this is pretty good. Oh man, he is he is going down easy. All right, so um, what just happened? Five experience points. Each. Okay, so that is definitely not right. I'm gonna need to fix that for sure. Um, all right, there we go. Now wait, do these these areas I think are set up for enemy encounters? Yeah, you know, there's there's an easy way to look. Let's actually should we save it right here? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and save our progress. And then I'm gonna go through and make sure that the cave system actually has correct battles in it. Um, right now it does not, but um, I also want to see yeah. So all of that stuff has has um, potential for enemy encounters as well. So we need to take a look at the cave. And there's nothing there. So I just have Wraith. Encounter steps 80 and uh, the range is the entire map. Oh, well that's that's cool. We can set them up for the entire map. Okay, so we, we need um, bats and rats in here. Those are the typical cave enemies, right? Um, so we've we've got them. Oh, we've got them in the other. Ca uh, of course we do. Um, we have them in the underdark. Let's just get the same sort of stuff here as in the underdark. Not not really though. We're we're not going to do all of the stuff from the underdark, obviously, because the underdark is a special place. I'm not finding the underdark at all. Music will help me find it. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea where the Underdark is. There we go. Path to Underdark. I'm sure it's in here. Underdark entrance. Okay, great. 40. Why is it set to 40? That's the general grass area. Um, weird. Oh, well, I mean, it's going to work. It, it should work anyway, because these, these troops on this map are set to range 40 so that's gonna work fine uh rats bats and rats and bats okay so this is going to be our general typical cave encounters um oh for everything that's right the octopus is a special encounter that you have to go to perfect all right this will work fine for what we're doing over here so i'm just going to go back into the stone cave and i'm going to set that up right here only the range um Come on. There we go. Uh, the range I'm going to specify to the entire map on all of these. That way, it just um, whenever you're inside the cave, everywhere you go, you're going to get hit by enemies. The only reason why that's different in the Underdark is so that we can have areas where you can't encounter enemies. Um, but that's only one area, I think. So part of the reason I did that in the Underdark is because I just completely forgot that you can set it to the entire map. So there you go. Uh, but in here, I've set it to the entire map, and we've got bats and rats as enemies that we can encounter. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and we're going to play test it again. Pause that music. And we're going to maximize this one and continue where we left off. So we're in winter rest, and if we go into the cave, this time we should actually encounter some real uh, enemy encounters. We should encounter some bats and some rats, which, I mean, it can be argued that those aren't <laughs> really real encounters, but, I mean, that's that's what you expect to see in a traditional uh, JRPG dungeon. Okay, again, I got totally messed up because I didn't see anything pop up up here, and I was just like, what's wrong with the system? It's broken. It's just because it said, hey, you encountered a rat, so... Anyway, um, we don't need to use any sorcery on this single rat. Let's just take him down. You know, he's, he's taking a little longer to go down than I thought he would. Um, I'm actually comfortable with how long it's taking to take him down. Well, especially because we broke him and he <laughs> was stunned for the whole battle. But anyway, I, I think I think the rat was pretty good. So so some of these, um, I, I'm gonna write down just a, a little bit of notes. So the rat, um, 
Felt like a good battle. And uh, what else? What else felt good? Um, the uh, sand tentacles. Um, that felt like it was a, a decent battle. It felt like they were doing enough damage to the characters, and the characters were doing uh, enough damage to that. Um, so sand tentacles. Also seemed right. I'm not going to say the sand tentacles felt good because that would be a funny thing to say. All right, let's. Uh, there we go. We've got bats. Oh, and I can't use his uh, magic because he's out of magic points. Which is really annoying. I think I think I am just going to make that uh, that particular magic attack a lot weaker. All right, I'm just gonna use a couple boost points. Take this guy down pretty good. Um, same thing with Isaac. Use a couple boost points. Attack this rat. Bat. These are bats, not rats. And then uh, this guy boost points and rain of bullets. Yeah, see, the bats seem to be in a good place, too. Oh, yeah, this is going to take it down easy. That's cool. It's still alive. Yeah, see, the bats are even still really good. Um, bats are really good, too. Write that down. So I actually, I actually like where a lot of these battles are. Um, I think there are a lot that I... W I'm not actually gonna like where they're at, but but a lot of these I, so far I'm actually uh, pretty happy with, you know, just just how they feel. It it feels like they're not too hard, they're not too easy. I mean, they're going down very easy. All all of these rats and bats, they're going down really easy. Um, but honestly, they're supposed to. They're supposed to be a, a bit of a nuisance, but they're not supposed to be mini bosses or anything like that. Obviously, not mega bosses. Yeah, see these guys, it's it's taking a little longer to get them down, but already I've got the rats stunned, um, but the bat's still up and, and kicking, and it's, it's taking a bit to take them down. I, I really like that. They're not doing quite as much damage on the, the party as they should, though. They really should be doing a lot more damage on them. I'm going to do another ranger bullet spread, which didn't do much. But Kieran, I'm going to boost and level slash, and that's going to do a lot of good damage. Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, I like it. I, I think these bat and rat um, battles are, are really good. So I'm, I'm actually just making a note. Um, bats and rats are at a, a good level. Um, but should deal more damage. More damage. That music is getting a little annoying. I need to switch that music out for something appropriate. Um, so I'm definitely not going to make them deal too much damage. Again, they're not supposed to be mini bosses or anything like that. Uh, but they are they are dealing too little damage right now. Like, I, I don't feel threatened by them. It takes a while to, to knock them down, which is fine. That's good. I, I think they're taking a good amount of time to actually defeat. But I also feel like it's... Like, they're, they're not doing enough damage to make them feel threatening. And they, they should feel threatening. Um... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a jump, even though that takes away his whole turn, but it's it's fine. It's okay. So I'll just focus all of my efforts on this one bat, and then when Isaac comes back down after his jump, he'll take that other one down, no problem. Yeah, because I can't even use my magic attack anymore, so that's okay. Um, all right, I'm going to start using boost points to attack this guy. Yes, to see these these bats especially are taking a long time to take down. Maybe they are taking a little too long to to take down. 
But especially with magic, they go down really quick, so maybe not. Like, that was pretty dang cool. Um, gonna work on that guy again. Isaac single-handedly taking down the bat before the game. Because that's just how it goes. Yeah, so now I, I, I'm just stuck with regular attacks. Just gotta take these guys down. Yeah, maybe I'll make these these enemies, the bats and rats, a, a little weaker. Well, but see if I if I had some um, if I had some potions or, or some items that could restore the magic points, then I could get some magic points. It would make them more uh, easy to beat. And look, I, I kind of like the experience. They're, the experience points aren't going up too high. So I think some of the other bat battles in the game are not balanced well, but I think these ones are balanced pretty well. Because it's, it's a lot harder to defeat these guys. Um, you know, it just it takes a little more. Hey, yeah, we got a, a new level, so now we can beat these guys. Oh. It's easy, one one hit kill, which is okay. Like I, I think sometimes under under certain conditions, doing just one hit kill is totally fine, as long as it's not every time. And it's not so far. It's it's not been every time. So I've I've been really uh, happy with the balance so far in this cave system, at least. Oh, and thing doesn't have enough. That's okay. Um, I'll use boost point and I'll go after that bat because the bats are very um powerful powerful it's funny to think of bats as powerful right, so maybe it's the bats that are a little too overpowered on these just too too uh hard to defeat okay so i'm going to go ahead and give him a boost point and then do the random bullets which can sometimes hit really hard other times it just it misses a lot that was a nice, powerful hit. And so that's why I want those hits to be uh, less frequent. You know, I want you to, to have to work for hits like that because they're very powerful. But see, I've, I've got another one here, so I can do another one. But see, it still didn't just, you know, make this... Um, it, it didn't make this battle too easy either, so I think we're okay. Yeah. See, it's nice. I, I, feel, I feel that... Those battles are fairly well balanced. I keep saying that. I'll stop saying it now. Okay. Um, so we need to find ten or Oh, we've only found six. Okay, so finding this ore is actually going to prompt the player to go off into these, these grassy areas. Because you're going to have to go out into the grass to find ore, and that's going to expose you to enemies and battles. I keep wanting to use his magic attack. I, I just need to make his magic attack more weak and that way it, it'll be I'll be able to use it a lot more often. The whole reason I made it so that he couldn't use it very often is because it was way too powerful. Now see, those guys went down too easily. I, I wonder what they look like compared to the rats and bats. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> That's right. We've got the slime. I love the slimes. Um, let's go ahead and get the boost point and do the ring of bullets. Took him down easy, that slime. Cool. We might want to change the frequency still and make them even less frequent. The enemies. I don't want to annoy the player. I've, you know, it's some, something I get annoyed too when I have too many battles. Yes! Okay, so return the 10 ore to the blacksmith. So if we go here. Alright, we're getting close to time. We're just making sure the events are good. Oh, you have them. I'll get to work right away. Should have like some um, audio cue there too when he has the, the exclamation mark above his head. Okay, all done. Here you go. Received four metal shields. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to save and I'm going to add that audio cue there. 
So right now we're just going through and refining all of the events, making sure that everything is is working correctly. And we fixed a lot of things. So we fixed the the battles in the cave system, and uh, we fixed the the quest, the ore fetching quest, um, which just had uh, a, a incorrect name on it. Weapons armor shop. That's the one. Okay, that's the guy. So he's saying, um, if you bring me ten or oh, you have them all get to work right away. So when he does the exclamation, I just want to play a little sound just so that you're like, oh, something's actually happening. Play a sound effect. It's sound effect. I think jump. It's the one that I like. It's it's the you know little whoop kind of thing. That one. But I want it to be like higher pitch. So that'll work. Just a little sound effect just so that you know something is happening different than what was happening before because there, there's that little exclamation icon that goes above his head but I want it to be even more obvious so we're getting a little audio cue. Okay great. That's good. Back to the play test. Thing is I have not play tested this game for a really long time. It's a really good idea to play test so. Um, it's a good thing that we're kind of going through. How much gold do we have? 374. How did we get that gold? Oh, because we've been fighting enemies. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so we're going to buy a map of Ishmar. Because I want the map of Ishmar. Can we buy another one? <laughs> hmm. Okay, so you know what? Um, this stuff, I don't even know what this stuff is. Firestone. I want a Firestone. Inflict 200 fire damage to all enemies. I can't get a fire stone. Uh, so the other thing that I want to do is change this so that you can only buy one map, actually. I wonder if... How can I... I don't know. I'm not sure how to restrict that so I can't buy, like, a bunch of maps. But, I mean, why not? Buy two, three maps of Ishmar. Um, what am I even doing? Okay, you know, let's get back to the playtest. I was wondering if there, there was a way I could make it like um, just an item where there's just one single item. And I'll bet there's a way I could do that, but I don't think that it's worth implementing that because if somebody wants to buy three maps of Ishmar, why should I stop them? Although, the, so my initial reason for wanting to stop something like that, um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a Firestone. Uh, my initial reason for wanting something like that is that um, a map of Ishmar like this, there probably wouldn't be a bunch of them floating around. You know, it should be fairly rare, so that's why I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, you wouldn't have like a, a whole stack of these. They didn't have the printing presses in the D&D world. Um, all this was like done by hand and hand drawn and stuff like that, so. Anyway, but we've got the map of Ishmar, and that's working fine. Um, so we need to locate the object, destroy the object, and bring back a living specimen. That's that's the other thing we need to do. So in with these events, I'm actually going to put that on the to-do list. Um, we need to create the... Um, I'll just call it recruiting. Recruit... How do you spell that? Recruitment system. I don't even know if recruitment is a word. Create recruitment system so that we can bring people back. And uh, above is going to be an easy one to bring back, but some of the other ones are going to be possible but difficult to actually bring back. Okay, we're going to check on this event. I'm just going to rush through it. Okay, everyone went quiet. Now everyone's talking again. Cool. Yep, we're interested. Excellent. Oh, I should have said no. But you know what? I'm, I'm just making sure that everything works the way it's supposed to. So join the army. We need to stay at the Winter Rest Inn, travel to the city of Ishmar, and speak to the king. Let's go up and say hi to Bubda anyway. Somebody say Bubda. All right. So um, we're going to go stay at the inn because that's what we need to do. Stay the winter rest in. See, I think all of the events are actually in really good shape up until the, the Underdark. 
And then in there, there are a few events that we're going to need to to make sure are working out all right. So this one should say it's complete up there. Great. It doesn't say it's complete, but it just disappears. So now we know the next thing we need to do is travel to Ishmar. All right. Captain Galathil is now with us. Thank you. Oh, let's take a look up here now that we've rested at the inn. This is all cleaned up, and this guy is, like, helping to clean this up. He's got a bag of garbage and the mop and stuff here. He's cleaning up after all this. Cool. Okay. So, anyway. I'll have some interaction with that guy. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Let's get moving on. And, uh, this guy that used to be over here is gone now. And we can break these and get ore again, which I might want to change to make it so that it's not quite like that. But for now, it's fine. And there's a witch. There's not really anything we can do with her right now. But eventually, I'm going to have her uh, give you a quest to, to do something to get a talisman of fast travel or something like that. That way, you can get around the D&D world a lot more quickly, a lot easier. You can just use the talisman and teleport to places of interest without, within the world. Um, everyone prepare for battle. Good. Okay, that all looked correct. That was all good. And there are six Duger stacked up one on top of each other, and it's scary. So let's go ahead and use a boost point and light them up. These Duger need to be stronger, like a lot stronger. I know there's six of them, but still, that was... Well, that's a really powerful move. Yeah, but see, we're just taking them all down like they're nothing. Steven, he's gonna do a level slash, and boom, they're all gone. Didn't even get a chance for everyone to fight in that. Okay, Captain, you arrived just in time, we were overwhelmed. Uh, we lost some people, they died, what? No, they just ran away. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, then they're going to go off and tell the king that we're on our way. And this guy's helping this guy out. You guys go on ahead. I'll take care of this one. I'll get him to an inn when he's recovered some strength. And that's right. I wanted to put those guys at the inn, um, up here, I think, in Ishmar. So let's take a look because now that we've left the map, I think they're going to be gone. We need to travel to the city of Ishmar still. Nope, they're still there. I think once we get into the city of Ishmar, these guys are going to be gone, and um, I do want them to be in the end. You may pass. Why? Thank you. Okay, join the army updated. So, we are now at the city of Ishmar, and that's working great. Welcome back, Captain Galathil. I can't go in the end. Of course I can't. Great, alright, so far the events are working just like they should. Um, like I... Uh, what's hoping like I've tested before It just takes too long it takes so long I mean, maybe it's okay. So sometimes games take a while to save and I mean, maybe that's fine But I've, I've ra I would rather it not take so long for it to save Okay, let's hurry through this really quick And Galathil's with us again, but then he's going to leave us to go with the king. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Let's take a look. Okay. So we're going to save. Wait, I need to take a look at the quest again. It seems like it was doing something weird. Locate the object. Oh, no. So, so the weird thing... Um, it's not weird. I just went back to this other quest because we completed the quest to get to Ishmar and join the army. So we are officially now part of the army. Sort of. <laughs> okay. So let's see. We'll talk to him. She's going to break free. And we're going to battle. And this should be a really hard battle. And I don't think it is. Oh, well, maybe it is. Hey, let's jump on the draft email. Um... And he's going to just do a regular attack. Ah, nice. We broke her. Level slash, because that's a really powerful move. She's actually pretty tough. Look at that. I can't do that one. 
But I can do a couple of those. Great. Do a couple of Hondos, and actually I'm going to do a range of bullets on her. Because that can be a pretty powerful one too. Just using all these boost points. Nice, we're taking her down pretty fast. Yeah, she's actually really strong, so... Aha, okay. So this is good, it's a, it's a good fight, but she was... She was, um, incapacitated for most of it, so I need to make her break point not, not quite so low. But I've sort of unleashed on her, and, and she's still standing. She's still fighting. But look, now, now she's broken again, so yeah, I, I definitely need to change her breaking point. It's too easy to, to just get it to where she's stunned and it just goes down too easy. Alright, so maybe I should write that down. So I'll write it down as much as I can so that I can keep it all in my mind. ID. Just looking at all my other notes. Oh, getting too many notes. That's going to be a bit hard. Uh, let's see. Um, draft email needs work. I'll just say needs work. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to save on four so that way I can go back to file three and take a look at the draft email again. The battle. Just so I can make that one, make sure that one looks correct and works correct. So we still need to locate the object. Um, I need to save this on file 4. I wonder what overriding as opposed to writing a new log does in, in terms of um, speed. Uh, let's check with you. The king's gone up to the second floor. So let's go up and say hi to Mr. King. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, come on, there we go. <laughs> right this way. Okay, let's hurry this along. Our Lutar's been waiting. Alright, so if we talk to him, I'll say we'll leave in the morning. Best get some sleep. <laughs> King says nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and rest for the night, and rather the Tar should join us once we're done. As soon as we leave the room, there we go. Rather the Tar joined your party. Great, so Storm the Underdark. Oh, so we we have a new quest, which is Storm the Underdark. So our main quest keeps getting supplanted by minor quests, but all of these minor quests are leading to the main quest, so that's kind of how it goes. Once you found the cause of the rising underdark and quelled the threat, return here for your reward. So all of this so far is looking correct. All of the events and everything are looking really good. I do need to make the N in and put some NPCs in there. But right now we have no in whatsoever. That's okay. Locate the Underdark entrance. So we're going to walk over here, and there it is. The entrance to the Underdark is just over there, just barely over there. It's hard to see because it blends into the rock, but it's there. I hope that's enough for the player to go on, because... Um, but see, this, this right here, I give them a good indication. They're going to be like, wait a minute, what's going on? And yeah, there it is. Okay, Storm of the Underdark updated. Investigate the Underdark. So, I just found the entrance to the Underdark. Now I need to investigate it. You see a single eye peering at you. What do you do? I'm going to investigate. I'm going to fight Roctopus. Oh, hey, we've got... Um, you know what? I'm going to wait for more boost points, and then I'm going to use his fire. I'm going to build up everybody's boost points. So, um... We've increased in level, so now we should be able to... Oh, his defense just went up. Uh, we should be able to uh, use all of our cool magic attacks now. Um, I'll go ahead and build up one more boost point before I unleash on everybody. Then we'll do our magic attacks and take him down super quick. 
which he's healing, so it's okay that we're going to do that. So let's go ahead and three boost points and then do the Ignis. Ignis. Oh, yeah, that, that pretty much took him down in just one fell swoop. That is a powerful, powerful move. It's got to be way less powerful than that. Rain of bullets, let's see what that does. Oh, that's pretty good, it's going to take him down. So that was a good way to do it. We need a better reward for something like that. Inspect it? Yeah. You can save 10 gold. Nice. Yep. Interdimensional shard. Great. And now here we've got just regular bats. Nope, I need 36 for it. Still need another level before we can do two of his attacks. So yeah, there's still a bit of work that I need to do, balancing and whatnot. Oh, we're at time already. Um... You know what, let's, let's just escape. Let's head out of here. Okay, I'm gonna hold control. I shouldn't run into enemies while I'm holding control. I can walk through walls and whatnot. So I'm just gonna get over here uh, to the southern part of the Underdark Trega so that we can test this event. Um, but I'm not actually going to test the event this time because we are... Where are we, four? Yeah, no, let's keep it on four. Okay. So I'm not actually going to test the, this event or move on right at this moment. We're going to do that next week uh, because we're at time. But I feel like we made a lot of good progress this week. Um, we went through, we, we finished getting all of the enemy encounters in all of the areas. We fixed the cave where it did not have the correct enemy encounters. And uh, we went through a playthrough, we took a look at some of the balancing and figured out kind of what is working, what's not working, uh, just a little bit. And we fixed a couple other minor issues with the quest system and some of the names that are in the items. So that's what we did today. This following week I'm going to go and get that plugin that's going to help us do different battle backs based on the region. And uh, I'm also, if I get the chance this week, I'm going to continue looking at this and see if I can um, uh, get some of these uh, battles a little more refined. Um, but next week we're going to take, uh, continue through and take a look at some of these events to make sure that, especially in the Underdark, all of the events are leading you towards the end. I want to, I want to finalize and refine the, the Underdark. I'm also going to start putting together, um, uh, through the week, uh, on paper probably, I'm going to start putting together NPCs. I'm going to think about, you know, what NPCs are going to be here, what are they going to be doing, that sort of thing. And I'm going to start thinking about the system for recruiting NPCs to come back with you to the cafe. That's an awful lot of stuff, and it's going to take a lot more than one week. But I'm going to start on all of those things this week, and that'll be pretty cool. So uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.